Hey everyone, Alex here for Bright Dog Academy. If you'd like me to personally answer any questions you may have about your dog, be sure to head over to brightdog.com where you can learn about my online training program, plus pick up a copy of the official Bright Dog Academy ebook. So when it comes to dog training and when I work with clients and when I recommend things, the only tools that I ever use is basic leash, a basic flat collar, and a harness at times when you're working on teaching your dog not to pull. But other than that, there are no more tools that anybody should need for dog training. However, there are still a lot of tools being sold and being promoted that number one are simply not needed, but number two can cause a lot of damage and negative side effects. So I want to basically give you guys the truth and facts about a lot of these. So let's start off with shock collars, right? Or maybe people will call them e-collars. It's the same thing. Usually people will just say e-collar instead of shock collar. Uh, trainers will say that to try to sell a potential client on using it to make it sound less harmful than it is because they're terrible. Um, shock collar, essentially it's a little box with two prongs that goes into the dog's neck and they can be automated to shock the dog when the dog barks. You know, the dog will bark and the vocal cords vibrate. It sets off the shock. They can be remote trainers where you can shock the dog with the press of a button Shock collars are a form of positive punishment. Positive punishment, by scientific definition, is a stimulus that you add to, you give to a dog after he has displayed a behavior, and when you give him that uh, stimulus, it hurts. So, the frequency of the behavior, the likelihood of that behavior to occur in the future, gets reduced. All right. So, in order for the behavior to be reduced, it has to hurt. Otherwise, there's there, there's no point to do it. So, shock collars, do they hurt dogs? Absolutely. It's a form of positive punishment. Positive punishment has to hurt. Shock collars lead to dogs with high anxiety, high fear, high stress. Um, physically, they can have, uh, you know, it's a, it's a device that can very easily malfunction. You can do a search for, it's warning graphic, uh, graphic content, but do a search for shock collar malfunctions and you will see how bad it can be when they, you know, can, they burn holes into dog's necks. It, it's just, a, it's just a, an outdated way of training. I have a whole entire blog post, another 10 minute video just on this topic. But just real quick, I'm just covering these tools quickly, why we don't use them, all right? Shock collars, it's, a, it's positive punishment, it's force, it's making your dog listen to you out of fear. Very similar to shock collars are prong collars, um, or we'll call ch or choke chains, okay? Prong or choke. Um, the prong collars are the big metal ones with the big prongs that go into the dog's neck. The choke chains are just the regular chains. These are super dangerous because if the dog keeps pulling, there's no stop. It'll just keep getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Uh, prong collars, again, both of these things are forms of positive punishment. When your dog does something, he gets pain, and that pain, the idea behind the pain is to stop the likelihood of the behavior that just occurred, that the pain was, was you know, added to. Um, a lot of people like to use prong collars, choke chains for walking their dogs, for dogs who pull. Unfortunately, this can lead to an aggressive dog, all right? You have a big, huge prong collar on your dog, and you're walking your dog down the street, and every day you walk your dog down the street, you walk by a school with, you know, children out front. And every time your dog pulls, what happens? Ah, he gets pain, because he gets choked from the prong collar. And ouch, pain, 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 every time he pulls, all right? And we know, as the human, that the prong collar is giving the dog that pain and that correction because he's pulling. What happens though, in the dog's eyes, is the dog starts to associate that pain with whatever he's looking at at the time. So if he sees children and he gets excited and he goes to pull and he gets choked, <coughs> all right, we know that that's coming because he pulled. The dog's eyes, the prong collar, is hurting him and the children are the ones causing the pain. And what starts happening is every time the dog pulls, when he sees children, he gets pain. Dog sees children, he pulls because he's excited, but oh, he gets pain. And over time, the dog starts to learn that children are bad. Children means pain is going to come. So what happens? They, be, they become aggressive. They start barking. They become reactive on leash. Um, and and they, you teach them to develop a fear of children. Now, that's just one example. This can be done with, they can develop fears with all sorts of stuff, right? 
But again, prong collars, choke chains, it's the same thing as the shock collars. Um, form of positive punishment, there's absolutely no reason that we need to use them. Um, there's not a single problem behavior. There's not a single command. You cannot teach a dog using purely positive methods that you would need you that you would need to use one of these for. There's there's not a single instance, right? In 10 years of doing this, I've never once needed to even consider one of these tools, all right? Um, another tool that I don't use is the clicker. Now, clickers are very, very popular. Is there anything wrong with using clickers? Absolutely not. Do they cause any sort of harm to our dogs? Absolutely not. There is not a single bit of harm. Um, there's no, no form of positive punishment. There's nothing. If you want to, if people want to use clickers, that's fine. In my training program, I don't use clickers. And here's the reason why, right? When you're working with training your dog, the goal, my goal for you as a dog, you know, owner, is to make training your job of training as easy as possible. Because the reality is you're the one doing the training. I'm giving you all the tips and advice and the you know secrets and the ways to do it, but you're the one who has to do it. Even when I work with people uh, you know, in person, they're the ones that have to do it. I'm only there for an hour. Once I leave, it's their dog. They have to be the one who follows through to get the dog's behavior to change. So for clickers, do they work? Sure. But they're not required. There's no, there, you don't need a clicker. And if, I, if you can train your dog and I can make it easier for you by leaving one thing out to, to, in order, uh, to use a clicker, you need to have a clicker, then you need to have treats, and then you have to have your dog as well. So it's very difficult to have to, every time you want to train your dog, go, okay, I've got to go find the clicker, um, you, then you've got to carry it out with you when you're in public. It's, it's just a much easier way if using just care-based techniques if we can just train our dogs without the clicker. It's one less thing for you to have to manage. So that's the reason why I don't use it. It's really for you know, the, your, the dog owner's convenience that if, it's not, if we don't need it, then why are we going to use it, right? So again, there's nothing actually wrong with clickers um, in the sense that they're going to hurt your dog or anything like that. Um, I, just, I just don't use them, right? One last thing while we're talking about tools. Um, are the head, they're called like halties, the, um, or head harness, we'll call it head halty here. And the reason why I don't like these is because they um, tend to, not intentionally, but get misused a lot, right? Basically, these go on the dog for a dog who pulls. Um, it wraps around the dog's face, the leash hooks here, so when the dog goes to pull, it turns them. The problem with this, though, is it turns them and it pulls and, st and strains their neck, right? So if you have a dog who's pulling, number one, no device teaches them not to pull. Any device just manages the pulling. If you actually want to train your dog not to pull, there's very specific steps to do. It's inside my course, Bright Dog Academy. Um, but you'll see that if you want to just, in the meantime, control the pulling, get a harness instead. Don't do the halty, just get a harness, right? And the best kind of harness is the front attached harness where the leash hooks on the chest. When you have a harness where the leash hooks on the back of the dog, it allows the dog to pull more. If you see like the dogs, the, the um, sled dogs who pull the sleds, all their harnesses hook on the back because it's easier for them to pull. When you have a harness where the leash hooks on the chest, what happens is if in the you know, leash is going back this way, when the dog starts to pull, it turns them. It's physically impossible for them to pull. No stress on the neck, no stress on their head, right? So just a little information about uh, training tools here. I have a full blog post on shock collars. I have a full blog post on prong collars, each with 10 minute videos if you want to learn more about that. But in this video, I just was doing a quick um, uh, you know, cover of these different things, why I don't use any of them. Um, and just to give you guys a little you know, um, truth about what these things actually do, all right? So this is part two, the truth about training tools in dog training.